In episode 6 of season 1, Jeremy heads to South America to catch a family of catfish on the Amazonian River. He hears a story regarding a catfish that is capable of swallowing a man whole, others that eat their victims from the inside out, and another that may swim into, to quote Jeremy, the most intimate of places. Could it be that a catfish capable of swallowing a man whole is here in the Amazon? That is what we aim to find out, everybody. But this may be no small feat, and it may take us multiple days to do this. In Jeremy's search for the culprit, he hears more about this story. How fishermen located a struggling catfish on the water surface, but it wasn't until they netted the fish that they took notice of the human legs protruding from its mouth. When police in Manaus investigated the attack, they identified that the catfish in question was the Piraiba. Now this fish has an estimated maximum length of 9 feet and a weight up to 450 pounds, which makes it the largest catfish species in the Amazon. Understanding that the best way for Jeremy to get his hands onto this fish, he heads to the scene of the crime. Armed with strong gear and tackle, Jeremy casts out to see if he can get his hands on this beast. And after hooking into a fish, followed by a 20 minute fight, a gilded catfish rises to the surface. Now, here we are on Marone River, and we of course are also on the search for this beast. But to do that, we need to cross off a few potential suspects, everybody. Similar to how Jeremy approached it on the Amazon. And that starts with the Gilded Catfish. Now, I am armed with the Mukanzi 12'10 SE and the Fillier 11,000 SE. These are special edition rods that came with the DLCs. It's just part of the whole beta part, uh, thing I'm using right now. But you don't need the special edition rods. You can use the rods that are in the game. And these are the Congo rods at that. You don't even need to use these. You can use the rods that you unlock close to Marone River. Um, you don't need to use something heavier. But because we have access to these, because we have access to stronger rods that you could use on the Congo for larger fish, we're going to go ahead and use them here because these are strong fish that we're dealing with. And we do want to make sure that if we can make the fight shorter, we can do that. Now we have dot hooks on here. We have our uh, freshwater prawns which we're going to throw out for those gilded catfish. And then we have open feeders. And we are going to throw in some of this catfish magic, which is made of this catfish Catfish destroyer and we're gonna throw that out there and see if we can get any gilded catfish to come along and take the bait so let's go ahead and add our catfish magic to our feeders and then we are gonna toss this out towards this marker out in the middle of this water and if you're wondering what this location is this is the Selva here on Marone River down at the very bottom we're going to toss this out here and see if we can get Gilded Catfish, everybody. But before we get too carried away, let's go ahead and switch the time. We are going to be fishing on this second hump of this day, or this night, I should say, and uh, casting out towards this marker. Well, looks like we got our first taker here. I'm not putting up a big fight at the moment. I'm not putting up a fight at all. What do we have here? It is a ripsaw. Decent sized ripsaw, though. Get in the net here. There we go. A unique ripsaw at that. Wow. Well, I did not think that we would be seeing another catfish species while searching for the gilded, but it makes sense. There are ripsaw catfish out here, um, and this is no man-eater. But look at this guy. So interesting with these scales coming down the end. Very cool. Very cool. Well, let's, uh, let's keep this guy and keep our eyes out for that gilded that we're looking for. That is a cool catch. Looks like we got some more interest in the middle rod now. Ooh, is it bigger? The question. Oh, oh, there we go. It's pulling out a little bit of line there. Not a lot, though. You know, it's at least putting up a fight. There's more than we can say for that little ripsaw, but that doesn't mean much since it's not fighting too much. But it is a gilded, which is what we are searching for. Now that it's seen us, it's tearing off some more line going out towards the snags, too. Luckily, we don't have to worry about that. Come on, you. Pull it a little bit. Pump it towards me. There we go. That is a little 45-pound gilded catfish. At least the right species. Now we just need to get that man-eater potential. But then, of course, 
We aren't looking for a man-eater, are we? We're just looking for something to cross off the suspect list. Well, finally got another bite over here. It's been quite a while, I feel. Good head shakes on this one so far, though. Good drop from the top to the bottom. He's pulling out more line up to 100 now. Did have one take us out to 120 at one point? Curious to see what this guy is. He is not. It's just a steady drift away, but that those quick drops from top to bottom is what is keeping me pretty happy about this so far. Might be doing a little bit of offensive uh, reeling here. We try to keep him away from pulling out too much line here. You can definitely see with this new fish fighting mechanic how much line we're able to pull in just by pulling him out a little bit to the side. I mean, we are making good ways on this guy. Every single pull we do, we are getting more line, just kind of pulling him off his path a little bit and then reeling in that excess line to the 60s now. Ooh, thought I saw a piece of fin there. Couldn't tell exactly what he is, but could it be what we are after? The 30s now. Gonna be able to see him when he gets over to the shallows here. Ooh, ooh, could it be? In the 20s, ooh, back out to 30. Pull him away. Not wanting to work with us. Ooh, that dropped down low. That dropped down low there, though. Back out to 50, though. He must have caught a glimpse of us, and he's racing back out for deeper water now. One last final effort, maybe. Oh, see, we've uh, we've got him close enough to net, but the game is telling us that he's not. He, we cannot see him, so we cannot net him. Which is interesting. I haven't seen that little note yet. Pull him towards us. Come on, you. Got him in the twenties now. He's been putting up a pretty good fight here. I'm feeling as long as we don't lose him from these little drops down to low tension. Got him in the twenties. Got him in the twenties. Come on, you. Come on, you. Gilded. It is a gilded. Is it big enough though? It is sizable. It is sizable. Yes! Let's go! That right there, everybody. That is what we have been searching for. Oh man. Man oh my. Ooh, here it is. The unique gilded catfish of Marone River, everybody. Goodness gracious. Now, similar to what Jeremy caught. Uh, and in the episode of River Monsters, this guy is a monster. I mean, this is truly a river monster. Look at this guy. Look at the size of him. Goodness gracious. And it's estimated that these fish could potentially grow to a man-eating size as well. But I tell you, you take a look at this guy. I mean, this is kind of, you know, a good, big, gilded catfish, and you don't get the idea that he could potentially swallow us whole, do you? I don't get that vibe. But I tell you what, this is one fish down. Makes me feel good that what we're doing is working and that's fantastic. I think it's time to see where Jeremy moves on from here. But this is a great start. After moving locations, Jeremy receives secret bait from a fisherman to target these catfish on the river. Now setting out on a boat, he sets out his line and drifts on the open river. But as a storm rolls in, he's forced to move locations. After moving locations, he's now hooked into another fish, but this one is also not the Piraiba. It's another of the catfish family, the red-tailed catfish. Now, similar to the gilded catfish, we are still here at Marone River and we're casting out. Now for the red-tailed catfish, can we get our hands on this guy, cross him off the suspect list? Similar to the gilded, we are still using those ADOT hooks. We do have large liver, but we could switch to something different, such as a freshwater crab or something like that. We'll just have to see if we get any bites and we'll adjust if we don't get anything that we're looking for. Oh, big pull on the third rod now. Increase our drag here. He is taking out a line to begin with. Good sign there. And this was with the new fighting mechanic in the fishing planet game. So we've got, he is big head shakes, honestly. Going up from, from very top to bottom, we might be looking at a trophy or something better. We will just have to find out. At the moment, I'm a little scared to even try to pump him towards us. And those, those, those darn head shakes are just dropping, dropping top to bottom. We are getting no headway with this guy, but it is a good sign, everybody. And once again, ADOT, cap and hook on the large liver there. Got a little bit of catfish, a little bit of catfish bait, uh, ground bait. Bring him in, but we might 
keep the uh, tension up and then pull to the side. Pull to the side to kind of pull them towards us a little bit and then reel in that slack. So it seems to work and also keep that tension up as we get another bite. But rather not risk it, let's just focus on this guy. Try to get out of range of that alarm going off. Brought him in from 130, he's down to 100 now. It's a good sign. Under 100, sub 100 now. Still trying to pull him out. Pulling him to the side to kind of do a little bit of pumping action. Now he's coming over here. 70s now. 60s. And I have no doubt, just like that last one, when he gets closer and kind of sees us, he might flip out and just swim away. My goodness gracious, those head shakes are just massive. The one dropped below the bottom line there. I thought we might, the chance we could have lost it due to low line tension. You have to really be careful. Moments like these that remind you that Jeremy had a 20, uh, 20 minute fight with that gilded that he caught on the Amazon and this guy mere minutes compared to that just a fraction oh he was a 30 and pulled us back out to 40 rather quickly he does not want to go below 30 feet that's for sure just kind of toying with us he almost goes back out to 50 yeah sure enough now he's back out to 60. finally got him in the 20s now what do we oh we have a red tail we have the red tail come here you in the 20s gotta get him close so we can get him in the net here Come on, you. God, look at that big face. Look at that big face. Get in the net, bud. Get in the net. There we go. We got him. Oh, baby. Let's go. Let's go. This is the red tail catfish, everyone, in all of its unique glory here. Now, similar to what Jeremy caught in the episode, this is yet another absolute river monster. However, where this fish differs is that there's nothing inside this guy's mouth. But in the episode, we get to see that there is something inside of the mouth of the red-tailed catfish Jeremy caught. The Kandiru, a small blood-sucking catfish can be seen falling out of that catfish's mouth. Wow, that is awesome. Let's go ahead and keep this guy and see where Jeremy heads off to next. From here, Jeremy heads back to Manaus where he hears more about this Kandiru and its unfortunate habit of traveling up warm water currents. A man relieving himself in the Amazonian River had an unfortunate run-in with this kandaroo, resulting in the fish swimming up his intimate member. This guy had to deal with this fish inside him for four days before he was able to make it to the hospital and have it removed. And Jeremy actually brings this guy back to see his attacker. And it's rather shocking to see the size of this fish. At this facility, Jeremy also hears about another catfish named the Kandaru Asu, a small catfish that invades dead animals, including humans, as a school and eats them from the inside out. He is told about a corpse thought to have been killed by multiple gunshot wounds until the corpse was found completely hollow. The Kandaru Asu had eaten away all of the internal organs. Jeremy attempts to catch one of these fish by lowering a dead fish into the river, and while he manages to catch one Kandaru Asu, he catches many more snakefish as well. Heading back out to fish, Jeremy and his guide come across a payara that is struggling to swallow another payara. And it's in this moment that Jeremy realizes that moments of fish taking on more than they can manage may be commonplace in the Amazon. This is obviously in reference to the catfish with the human legs sticking out of its mouth. From here, he reaches an area that looks promising and casts out his line from the boat. All right, so similar to Jeremy, we are here in the Amazon on the hunt for a man-eater, a potential man-eater anyway. And to do that, we are fishing on the Amazonian River and we've got three different rods we're gonna be tossing out here with bait to try and get this monster cat. I'm gonna go ahead and put my rod stand down here just to make it quick, but you can see we got a marker out here and this marker represents the deep area, really close to the starting area here on uh, Amazonian River. You can see this deep area just beyond this marker. So I've marked out the very beginning of it so that if I throw past it, even now to here, we should be just fine. But we can go all the way back if we want to, which might come in handy because we might throw it in the middle and then with the arch or arc, if you want, uh, of, the, of the bait coming down to the bottom, uh, it, it might end up where the marker is anyway. But we want to make sure that we get into that deep area. So let's go ahead and show off what we've got. We've got the same Makanzi 12 foot 10s here with the Lamb Pulsion 12,000s. Um, we've got our catfish bait. Uh, we got 14 out hooks. Um, 
fluorocarbon leaders, and we've also got large livers and huge cut bait. Now I'm sure a few of you are thinking fluorocarbon leaders. Aren't you afraid that you might get bitten off by a shark or something if, uh, if a shark were to come by and grab this huge cut bait? Well, I am and I'm not. Um, if, if For one thing, it's not going to be easy fishing for them from the bank, but we are going to be able to fish with three rods at the same time. And if you don't have the Congo boat, that's pretty much impossible to do in a boat. Um, so we are going to just cast out from here. And if we do catch a shark, I don't want to find out about it until I get it here after fighting it for 10 minutes or whatever, because it's going to be a bit of a fight to get over here. Um, I would rather it just bite off that line to begin with, and then I just know, oh, that was a shark. We're going for catfish, so I don't really care. But because we have our catfish magic all prepared, I'm just going to go ahead and toss this out beyond this marker here, and we are going to see if we can catch anything, everybody. And toss it out like yay far. Put it into the rod stand here. Boy, it didn't take long. I was just putting down the third rod and we're already getting beeps there. I should say we are fishing at this very starting area where you get your boat into the water, basically Amazonian maze. And we are fishing right on these big humps right in the middle of the day, cloudy. So yeah, give it a go if you ever want to try this exact same thing. But otherwise, I'm just waiting for one of these beeps to finally take off. Uh, it has been a good while and probably sitting here for a good five five going on ten minutes Finally have a bite though Hopefully that means that a lot of the smaller fish that came upon this 14 knot hook were like whoa That's too big. I can tell that there's a hook there <laughs> So this must be a monster. I'm hopeful. We'll find out I guess coming up to the top in real life This would be a troubling scenario of him coming over there closer to those uh, trees there I'd be worried that he'd be getting snagged up in that but luckily we don't have to worry about that here. Now that fin sticking up out of the water almost makes it look like a shark. Well, I've been fighting for this guy for a few minutes now. It hasn't been terribly long, which makes me feel like maybe not too huge, but hopefully it is our targeted species. Get over here, bud. Can't, I, I don't, I don't, I can't think of another thing that it could be. Let's see. It is a Piraiba, our first Piraiba here at the Amazonian maze, and it's 121 pounds. Take a look at this guy. 121 pounds to start us off, and it's not even a trophy. Nowhere close to a unique. Look at that mouth. Open it. It really does look like a shark. It's kind of crazy looking. Let's go ahead and keep this guy. We need to uh, keep on it. Catch a bigger one of these guys. Is this already going? Oh, we've got another fish on. Oh, he's on there. Good deal. What do we have on, though? It doesn't seem like a pure Aiva. Oh, it's another catfish. It is a sorbum catfish. Well, look at that. Another type of catfish out here. Not the man eater we're looking for, but that is a wild looking thing, isn't it? Go ahead and keep this guy. All right, starting out day two now. It was pretty simple. I was able to just hop into the kayak here, hop back out. They had all the uh, rods removed, and then we just made some more bait, and we're good to go. Our first bite. It's taking line out, which is a good sign. See how far he goes. Let's see, we got 20, 25 feet now. Come on. Oh, he's so close. Oh, he is a big one. Okay, let's see. Trophy. Oh, man. New personal record, though. Top notch. That is a, de a decent sized Piraiba. That's definitely a step up. Wow, look at the size of this dude. Okay, well, let's keep this guy. We still get, we're still on the hunt for the unique. Still 9,437 XP, $15,000. Oh my goodness gracious. That was close. That was close. He had us out to 250 feet. All right, we've got another bite now. Let's see. At 130, 129. Ooh, that was a big head. That was like a killer whale coming up to breach at the top there. Oh. All right, let's see what this guy does. All right, we had this guy, he was out to like 180 feet. He never did break 200, but he is a monster. Absolute monster, he's gonna go right underneath the kayak here. We need to pull him over to the side. Let's see if we can get a look at him before he gets too close. Man, he is fighting these last couple feet. Oh my God, 273 pounds. We have finally got him. The unique Piraiba. Let's go. This is it. This is it. The unique Piraiba of Amazonian Maze. And it's just like uh, what Jeremy had caught in the episode. It's absolute stunner. We need to get another view of this guy. See what he looks like. Oh my god, dude. Look at that. He is as big as he knew. He, he could swallow he knew. I swear to God. Look at look at this dude's mouth. He face would just go right into his mouth. That would be 
absolutely ridiculous. But yeah, that is absolutely insane. Piraiba, the unique Piraiba here at Amazonian Maze, everybody. But unlike Jeremy Wade, we are going to go ahead and keep this guy. Um, and that is going to pretty much complete our episode here of episode six, season one. Similar to Jeremy's investigation of the Amazonian man eater, we have caught the three largest catfish in the Amazon and have lived to tell the tale. Now, if you found this video entertaining or helpful in any way, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this in the future as we make our way through all the River Monsters videos. And if you want to join us through our live streams where you might catch more of our River Monsters catches, join us every Monday, Wednesday, 7.30 to 9.30 p.m. Central, everyone. But that's going to wrap up this episode, everyone. Take care, stay safe out there, and as always, remember, hey! You. So you say you like fishing and hunting in the outdoors, but you're not following the modern day outdoorsman? You know it's cool, right? I mean, I don't want to pressure you into doing anything, but uh, give it a shot. And I'll make you a deal. You subscribe, and I'll let you watch the videos for free. And that's a great price. Plus, we have cool shirts. So follow the MDO today. We're one planet, one family. Game on.